Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the name of Jesus. Got back from a great vacation. I did nothing. It was awesome. It was just kind of later on. And if you think I'm got, I got a tan because Nadine made me carry sticks yesterday. So, so, so. Did you get any tan, Nadine? I didn't see. Yeah, I did too. Okay, very good. So, it was a great day to carry sticks on the yard, right? <laughs> um, we have a great uh, order of worship today. But I want uh, before we start, I want to have a couple announcements. I want to share with you. Birthdays and anniversaries. Yes! It's his birthday next Sunday and we're not here. Well, wait a minute. We're not. We're good to you. We'll get to you later. I'm going back there. I point. <laughs> Hang on. I got it. Because wait. Who is. I'll get right to you. I get right to you. Who is it? Whose birthday? <laughs> Grandma's? Awesome. Happy birthday, Grandma. Woohoo! Okay. Now, you're not going to, you're skipping church next week, right? Okay. We're going to be kids. Okay, got it. I'm just teasing. And Glenn, it's your birthday next week? Yeah. The 21st. Awesome. Happy birthday, Glenn. Okay. Okay. I know. When I was, I was pointing you, I was actually going above you there. That's how that was. There you go. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Happy birthday. Send her our greetings. Anybody else have a birthday anniversary? Don't see. Why don't we stand up? To, oh, one more. We have, did you have one? Wait a minute. Your 21st birthday. Happy birthday, brother. That's awesome. All right. Aren't you happy your mom did that to you? There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't we stand up, let's turn to our neighbor, let's give everybody a really good welcome. We'll get going. Hey, buddy.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and action. Although your love for us is unconditional and constant, we have not loved you in the same way. We also confess that we have not loved neighbors as ourselves, even those who have placed in closest relationship with us. We ask that you forgive us, 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 forgive us
To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers, but what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is taken from 1 John, the third chapter. See what kind of, love the, of, uh, kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we, will, we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Let's honor the Lord Jesus by standing to hear his word in the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be at peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the kids to come up. There. I think we got a lot of kids on the road this weekend. Oh, there's some. Look at you guys coming up. 
Oh, wow, what a day. Come on up, you guys. I'm kind of tired. Nate, my wife made me work hard yesterday. I had to carry lots of sticks. I had to carry sticks all the way to the dump. <gasps> I was tired, so. But she takes good care of me. I want to know, tell me everything you know about God. Just, you don't have to like a whole, do a whole thing, but tell me one thing that you know about God. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? What do you know? Anything. What do you know about God? Okay, let me, let's try this. Is God real or unreal? Very good. There you go. Okay. Who is, who is this guy on the cross? What's his name? Jesus. Do you believe that he is God? Yeah. He is the son of God who come to take away the sins of the world. Today, in our sermon today, we're going to learn how to talk to others about God because it's like you, somebody asks you, what do you know about God? You kind of freeze because you've never really had to do it before. Well, we're going to talk about that today. How do you talk to others and how can you talk to others about what God has done, especially about what his son Jesus did for us because what did he do? Yeah. <gasps> Absolutely perfect. He took away all of our sins. He died on the cross. He said, it's finished, and it was all done. And then, did he stay dead or did he rise? He, ri he rose from the dead, and that's what we want to let others know because there's so many people who want to know what Jesus has done that need that message. Can you pray with me, you guys? Repeat it for me. Dear Jesus, teach me to be bold with your love. Teach me to be bold with your love. Amen. Thanks for coming up. All right. Let's sing our next hymn. So for all of you who are like when I wear my robe, this is why I don't like wearing it. Because <laughs> I have to find my pocket. There. Then Nadine will go, it was not fixed right. All right, there we go. All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today, I want to teach you how to talk to others about Jesus and something that, that what happened during the kids' message is exactly why I want to talk about this because they looked at me with deer in headlights, right? Because they go, I want to talk to you about, tell me what you know about God. And they know a whole bunch of things about God, but it was just kind of scary to talk about it. Well, whenever we talk about, think about talking about God, we think about some guy preaching fire and brimstone. I know that's a weird picture, but that's the only one. Fire, you gotta, you gotta yell at people all the time. We had, I had a conversation with pastors recently, and they were talking about, they had this opportunity to write a series of articles for the newspaper, and they listed all the things that they were against. 
that they were going to write about. And it's like Christians think that all the time that when we, when we want to talk about Jesus, i got to tell you how bad you are, or what your lifestyle is wrong, or that you should change your way. And all of that stuff is important. We want God to know, we want people to know that, that God has standards and that he has sent his son Jesus to change our lives forever. But, you know, and we, there's times that we need to repent of our sins, but a lot of times, man, we live in a world that on any given day, on, on, on a Sunday, 30% of the population in America attends church on a Sunday. We're not talking to a crowd that, that understands about God or even thinks about God anymore. And so, and I was wondering, and Lutherans, especially Missouri Synod Lutherans, were deathly afraid of sharing our faith because we're afraid that we will say something wrong, right? Well, and we're so used to, okay, you know, Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Violet has the vapors. Pastor, can you go say a good word to her? We send the pastor, we send the church worker over there. And that's good, that's what I'm here for. But we don't have a lot of confidence in ourselves to be able to talk to someone about the faith, about why we believe what we believe. i got to adjust myself here. Excuse me. There, there i got a little more. Um, we, we get so concerned about we're going to say things the wrong way. How do you talk to others about God? I want to share with you just a little bit from the book of Acts. If you have your Bible, we're in the book of Acts in chapter 3. And this whole section before, before Peter did this whole sermon that we read about, they were in this area, and there was a guy there that couldn't walk. He was lame. And they would bring him out in this area, and I'm going to read this to you. A man lame from birth was being carried, whom they daily led at the gate at the temple that is called Beautiful, to ask alms for those entering the temple. So asking alms, he was asking for money. He was like the guy sitting on the corner of the, of the, of the interstate or at, or at Walmart, and he's got a sign that says, we are desperate. Well, it was pretty obvious that this guy was desperate. He could not walk, and he had no social security. He had no benefits. So the only way that he took care of himself was that he had to ask for others to help him out with, with donations. And then he said, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked, them to, he asked to receive alms, and Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting them to receive, to receive something from them. But Peter says, I have no silver and gold, but what I do I have to give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Can you imagine what that, what that must have been like, huh? Just uh, This guy could not walk. And he's probably carrying on a ruckus. And they're going into the temple. And all the people saw him. All the people. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple, asking for alms, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. That is the setup to the rest of the reading that we had. And what did Peter and John do? They told them, well, at that time, they preached. And you go, well, yeah, but they're apostles. They know how to do this. But the point of all this is that they had opportunity to tell someone about the power of God and the goodness of his love and the forgiveness of sins found in Jesus, and they took it and ran with it. You know, and the deal is, did it work? I don't know. It doesn't really say any results. But we know during that time was the start of the New Testament church, and thousands of people were coming to faith because people were bold and courageous talking about their faith and talking to others about Jesus. Now, I want to talk about this. 
this is kind of how we look at talking to others about Jesus, right? We got to gather around in a formal study. We all open our Bibles. We get super serious. And this is how we go about doing it. And yeah, you know what? There is an opportunity for that. I mean, I, when I was a campus pastor, it was really interesting that our, our guys would bring their friends to church and we would open our Bibles together. And we had opportunities to talk about this. But most of the time for us, here's how opportunities look like. It's neighbors, right? Neighbors talking to each other about how life is, or or they had a, they had just had a grandbaby, and and are they or they or they're talking about their illnesses or things like this. And we have opportunities to share what we believe about God. It's also like this. How about this? At the bar, and we're having a beer together. Although you got to be very careful that that you know it can get pretty weird at times when you have so. Moderation is the name of the game here. But, I mean, how many times does really great conversations about God happen when we're together with beer? That's a good Lutheran thing to say, right? Yeah. Here's parents and grandparents with your children. You know, parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, It's really important for us to get used to talking to our children about God. You know, you can drop your kids off here at church, and we'll educate them. But you know, there is a big movement in Gloria Dei to not be the primary teacher of the faith. Yeah, we will do this. and We're we're going to do it with our preaching, and we're going to do it in Sunday school, and we have camp confirmation. But we're going to be more supportive of you passing on the faith to your children. Because I can stand and talk to your kids for 45 minutes about the faith, but the steady, constant drip, drip, drip of your words and your actions to your children, they mean a whole lot more. You guys know what we're talking about because how many of our kids, when they, you know, they say, I will suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it at confirmation, how many kids do we get to see them at, after they're 18? We just don't. We just don't see a lot. And so if this conversation that you have about God is very important. Funerals, huge opportunity. You know, I've told people that I would rather do 10 funerals than one wedding, and people look at me like I'm shocked. They're shocked. Like, are you nuts? It's not that I want people to die, but I have a really great opportunity to talk about the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. How about this one? Ever get in a fight with your spouse or someone else? It doesn't matter if it's your spouse or, or someone else. And, and these are great opportunities for us to talk about forgiveness, repentance, trust in God through our disagreements. How do you, and if you're, if you're in a relationship with someone, how do you tell someone you're sorry? And how do you express to them they are forgiven in Jesus' name? These are great opportunities to talk to others about Jesus. Kids in school, whether it's in elementary school or high school or college, man, there's all kinds of opportunities to share the faith with them. And finally, or now one more, at work. How many times has conversations come up that are either about what's going on in the world or what, what's going on in our lives and the our struggles that we have that we're able to deliver some hope and we keep on thinking to ourselves, if I would have only, if I would have only just said this or known this, then maybe I would have been able to make a witness. Well, we're going to talk about how to do this. And finally is this one. Where is that? That's on a pontoon boat. Everybody in the Brainerd Lakes Breezy Point area up here has conversations in the boat. And the great thing about having conversations in the boat is that they can't get out. (laughs) I have a friend, I have a friend who, gosh, 1992 or three, we were in my boat. And his family was going to church with me, but he wasn't, and everything was going on. I says, well, 
you know, bass season is open and walleye season is open, spring turkey hunting is open. Your kids need to be baptized and you need to start coming to church. And I said, you have two choices. You can either confess your sins and trust in Jesus now or I'm going to push you out of the boat. <laughs> I literally said that. He's a pastor in Medina now. So go figure. I mean, the, we're, we were kind of joking around with my buddy, but we're, you know, we have opportunities all the time to talk to others about Jesus. What I want to do now is I kind of want to go through some of these opportunities. First, before I do that, I do want to read a Bible passage from you. I want to look it up. It's from 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want to read this to you. This, is all, this was a thing that he read. Paul wrote this letter to Timothy. And now, Timothy was a pastor. I mean, he was an evangelist. But I think it really applies to us. He said, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead. And by his appearing in his kingdom, he said, preach the word. Be ready in season and out season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For a time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. Huh? That's like today. But will have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. Do we know about that today? Teachers to suit their own passions. We got a neighbors all over that are like that, are just find, finding their own ways, and they're not of God. And will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist. This is our opportunity, people. I mean, we live in a world today that is so much like the first century. People are looking for other things. They're looking for hope all over, and they're not finding it. And we could give them that hope by just talking to them about God. Now, I want to go through this a little bit. How do you talk to God about God to others? Number one, pray about it. See, a lot of times, and I get this, and this is okay, we have opportunities to talk to others about Jesus, and we miss it. Right, because we're not prepared, because we don't know exactly what to say. And I get that. But when that happens, when that happens, I want you to go home and I want you just to pray about that. Said, Lord, give me an opportunity to, to kind of come back to that topic again. And in the meantime, this is what we do. Do a little prep work on your this is why Jesus is important to me topics. Okay, now I am going to explain this a whole bunch more in our Bible class. This, I hope if you haven't attended Bible class, I really would you like you to attend this one. Um, I always, that's why I'm always asking you to bring your Bibles, and I'm glad when you do, and I know we're getting kind of slack for some reason. Just bring your Bibles because I'm giving you kind of tools when we highlight things. We're giving you tools and how to work through the scriptures. Now, the next book I want you to get is this one. is Luther's Small Catechism, and it is the one that is published by Concordia Publishing House. And Brian, we're going to put a link in the, in the, in the, in the video. Um, I'll try to send it. But it's the Concordia Publishing House. You can either get this through cph.org or you can go on Amazon. But make sure it's their latest edition. Now, why is Luther's Small Catechism important? Now, how many of you had to memorize stuff out of Luther's Small Catechism, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going, I never want to see it again, okay? But here's what's so good about it. It separates the faith into segments. Who God is, what he wants and doesn't want, how do we become a part of his family, how to talk to him, etc. But this one, with, ex with, with explanation, has in the back all kinds of Bible verses and topics for you, and it's got a great index. If you are serious about kind of taking it to the next level or just want to study on yourself, Buy yourself for probably under 20 bucks a copy of Luther's Small Catechism with the explanation. It's going to be a thicker book, not the thin one, but this has got all the explanations in the back. Um, 
What do we ask and seek from our Father in this petition? I mean, it's got all kinds of Bible verses. You can research topics on morality. Maybe you're talking about somebody about abortion. Maybe you're talking about somebody about, about how they should honor their God and their lifestyle or uh, who God is or what he's done for them. You can find great Bible verses and all kinds of things with Luther's small catechism. I, I, we don't make any money selling the catechism, but I, this is how I learned how to talk about God with others. When I was in seminar, we had to buy these huge books of doctrine. It was called Peeper, and it was four volumes, and it was Latin, German, and English. And I would go, then they had another book that was one volume of, of Peeper. It was called Mueller, and I used to use that. Then they had another volume, I think it was called Meyer or something like that, that was even more compendious that, and then they had a catechism. I did all my research as a pastor using just this and then working my way up. As I would. But this is such an invaluable tool for you to, to research your topics because you kind of know in your heart, why is this important to me? Why is Jesus important to me? But you don't know exactly where the Bible verses are or how to explain it. This gives you a tip. So you're praying about it. Lord, give me another opportunity and you're doing a little prep work. Here's a big one. Proclaim versus condemn. In the world that we live in, with how nuts it is, and how godless it is, it's often easy just to condemn everybody. Well, it wasn't that way when I was a kid. I certainly didn't grow up knowing that. We can, everybody who was, who's been a lifelong believer can say these things. And yeah, it could be true. And there is times to call people repentance and faith, but maybe sometimes you need to say to them when you're on a topic that's about morality or, or why we choose not to do things, this is why, okay, this is why I don't have time to go with you this morning on Sunday. By the way, this, this happened to me yesterday. I had an opportunity, I, I was looking, I needed some, some work done on my house. And I called our guy who does a lot of work on our house, and he says, well, I suppose you're not going to be there on Sunday morning. Well, of course, and this is why I, you know, and I said, yeah, because Jesus is important to me, the forgiveness of sins, and I want to worship him. I mean, these are opportunities that we always have. But I would say pro proclaim versus condemn. Um, you're going to be talking with people who have totally different ideals than you. But we've got to remember that is the gospel, the forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ, which changes people's hearts. There are times for us, of course, to condemn and stand up for what we believe. And some of those things are common, people. When we see what's going on in the world, we have to make a stand for what is right and what is wrong. But most of the time, when you talk to your friends and neighbors, you have opportunity to share the gospel with them and see them saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I want to read this Bible verse to you from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It says, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Man, we have opportunity like ever before to tell others about Jesus. But you don't have to worry about it. A lot of people come to me and they go, well, they never, their lives never change. I didn't see anything change. Let God do his work through the gospel. Don't keep score. Just talk about God. I hope that helps you to learn how to talk about God to others. And that's all I've got for today. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's take our offering, please.
Dear Lord Jesus Christ, your death and resurrection changed our lives forever. You have given us hope in the midst of sheer hopelessness. Lord, we pray that you'd give us opportunity to talk to others about God, about your love, about your forgiveness and peace, about your life-changing grace. Lord, give us opportunity and prepare our hearts for those times that you give us that we might be a light of your hope and peace to the world. Lord, we lift up before you all the leaders in our world who are so often at the brink of war, especially for the Middle East and Ukraine and, and all over, Lord. We pray that you would bring sanity and peace and perspective to our leaders, Lord. Keep them from war. Lord, we lift up before you Caleb. Lord, he's going through some real tough times now. And Lord, we pray that your will would be done and that you would continue to strengthen him and his family in the hope that they have in you. And Lord, also we lift up before you Roger Steele, who is hospitalized with pneumonia. Lord, we pray that you would continue to heal Roger and that by your grace that he might become back to full health and that he would always have faith and hope in you. Lord, we pray for all those who are struggling, for those who feel no hope. Lord, give us opportunity to share your words of hope to them. All these things, Lord, we bring to you, praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. You may be seated.
Now this true body and true blood of your Lord and Savior evermore strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith and the life everlasting. God's peace be with you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our last hymn. today. Um, welcome to the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I want to invite you downstairs. Um, we're going to take a deep dive into this, and I just really want you guys to think about questions that have had that, that you've had to talk to others about God or about morality or whatever, and we're going to kind of look through this and see. I'm going to show you how I use this to kind of prepare myself to speak about others about Jesus. And even if you don't get that opportunity again, at least you get to know a little bit more. This is going to be a great topic. Brian, let's make sure, I'll send you a link to this, Brian, so that we can put this up here if you want to get one of these, because it's, it's Luther Small Catechism from Concordia Publishing House, and it's got the explanation, so it's going to be a little thicker volume. So, And I'll show you how to use that. Um, I think that's all I got. God go with you this week. Thanks for coming.